Hi, guys. Oh, hey, there we go. There we go. We're here. Oh, awesome. Let's get started. John, I think you had some questions for them. <laughs> go ahead. Well, let's review the four things we had. The first one is the alignment to standards. We're trying to get everything up to grade level. Number two is the breadth of standards. We cover literature, informational text, writing, spelling. We cover everything over the course of the year. We talked a little bit about time on task. And then today we'll talk more about the instructional component and the uh, instructional uh, classroom instruction. So I think what I wanted, we talked about last time, you were going to do something about either more observations or looking at student work and just maybe report out something you've done since last time that you're thinking about or anything you're thinking about the instructional level to run the school's instructional program. Yeah, so ideally what we decided to do was, um, you know, get in and observe for a full lesson instead of that, you know, 10 minutes that we were initially doing and really look at the distractors that are happening in a classroom. So we really wanted to see what, what's actually happening across the classroom. You know, is it teachers are spending a lot of time behaviour managing and not able to get that optimal teaching time? Is it, you know, the like, you know, um, the... The organisation, but, you know, are they getting phone calls and interrupted randomly? Mm. So we were really looking at, because that was the first time we've ever actually looked at that and actually thought to um, look at the way a classroom for a lesson is actually operating. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for myself, I observed three teachers. Um, I know there's one teacher I need to do a little bit more work on ensuring that they are maximising the 50 minutes of the lesson and not dragging it out um, because you know, there was a certain there, there was a certain task that they needed to do and that task really should have taken 20 minutes instead it took 45 50 minutes um, so I know that that's something that I need to do uh, with that one teacher um, but ideally all the others it was really good to see that yeah we actually don't have a lot of admin bringing up phoning you know teachers seem to have a very good handle on expectations of their students um, and for me, you know, there was one teacher that um, she's got an amazing setup in her class. The kids know their routine. Um, but it was the student engagement norms I actually focused a little more on in her class. And I noticed she wasn't pop sticking very much. So I know, again, that's something that I want to work on with her. Um, right. But, yeah, it was, it was a great eye opener. It was fantastic to go in for a full 50 <laughs> minutes and see what's happening. I learn every time I go in the classroom, I learn something. Yeah, no, it's, it's really great. It's really powerful. So, yeah, that was me. Um, so when I went in, I didn't see, I saw um, a lot of structure, very little behaviour management that was needed. Kids were pretty much uh, compliant and doing whatever the teacher asked. It was always organised. Kids were on task. Um, honestly, there was no interruptions during those times that I was in there, which I know isn't, typical because I do know there are a lot of interruptions so for some reason when I was in there there wasn't <laughs> but I am getting feedback in our interruptions from uh, phone calls from the front office interrupting learning so yeah I don't know why it didn't happen when I was in there but it didn't um, the environment it was easier for children to access their equipment that was done very quickly uh, and one class actually had a very quick, in their, in their um, lesson, had a quick fruit break. And I was really impressed at how quickly the children collected fruit, sat down, um, a story was read while they ate it. The fruit break was no more than five minutes, whereas sometimes that can stretch mm -hmm. over quite a long time. So they had their fruit break and back into, bang, back into learning. And I thought, wow, that was really well done because yeah. um, that does concern me that those breaks can <clears throat> stop learning for 20 minutes. But it was really quick. Uh, yeah, it was really well organised. Again, I didn't see pop sticking like I would have liked to. Mm. Um, in one, the other two all the time. So, but one, not as much. So I might just have to work on that a little bit. That You might be able to cue yeah. them for questions yeah. while you're in there. Uh, this would be a good spot. Yeah. Can you ask the students how you solved that? Maybe they could write it on their yeah. whiteboards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't, I didn't see a lot of talk partner happening either. Yeah. yeah. So that was a bit. That were, and you can still do it when there are receptions, but mm -hmm. I just think I didn't see it. Yeah. In those lessons, I didn't see. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to say it's not happening. No, it's not just, to say it's, it's not happening. Know, but in those lessons, I guess it's not I a regular. It, but practice. Yeah. In the two classes, everything was yeah. pop sticking. Yeah. 
and the other one mm. didn't mm. see it. Yeah. yeah. Pop sticking. Okay, let's hear the last person. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last one. Pops. Welcome to Australia. We make our words for everything. What do you call them? I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I say usually pull a stick. I think that's what it is. Oh, okay. pull a stick. All right. I observed a couple of classes at the other end of the school in the um, senior park, and two of them they were quite different. One of them I was really impressed with. Um, the kids knew the routines, they knew the structures, everything ran really quite smoothly. The teacher had the PowerPoint all set up ready to go when I walked in. The learning intention was there, success criteria. She then broke that down, then went back to the learning intention again and worked all through the lesson and had examples and everything. And that ran really well for the students. There were a couple of little interruptions, but nothing major. Um, they had to split into groups. And she just let them choose the groups. That wasted a little bit of time with people not getting into groups quickly. And it was just one bit where they needed thesauruses and they couldn't find them in the classroom. They had to go to another classroom to get them. So it wasn't huge, and it, but it did impact their learning a little bit. And I even worked it out. It was 14% of the time they were off task. Okay. I'm not doing maths. Uh, but the other class was a little bit different. Um, I think me being in there might have stressed the teacher a little bit. Mm. Um, Usually when I go into class, I'm a big distractor to the students, so they had to get used to me being in there first. Okay. Um, but she wasn't very prepared for the lesson. She had a PowerPoint, but the kids all came in, sat down, and then she went and got the PowerPoint up, mm. started that, got partway through the PowerPoint, realised she works with another teacher, so she wasn't familiar with the content of the PowerPoint and there were some bits missing, mm. so that wasted a bit of time. She could access it, but she had to go then upload it into the PowerPoint and then put it back up. So just little bits like that where she was a little bit, I think it was the teacher not knowing the lesson properly, basically, mm. and that impacted on their learning. Mm. But they were pop-sticking and they were using whiteboards, but I did notice with the whiteboards, she was getting to write on the whiteboards, discussing the answer and moving on. She wasn't getting them to chin it and show what was on the whiteboard mm. for that sort of mm. evaluation. Mm. But, yeah, other than that, and she wasted 24% of her time. <laughs> well, I can just give a couple things. Um, I think if you look in the classrooms, you can tell which teachers have trained the students because when the students really know the routines, they know to turn and pair share, they know how to hold up the whiteboards, they, they even start doing the complete sentences on their own. I did see last week some students in uh, kindy move from the desk to the carpet in 17 seconds. I mean, it was amazing. I know this teacher had trained them. They all got up. They walked right to the carpet and sat right in their spot and didn't lose any time at all. So I, I think that training the students is part of it. Uh, you talked about the teacher who was slowly doing something. I, I call that the teacher trying to get through the day by kind of stalling. You know, handing out papers, collecting books, arranging things, handing out one paper at a time to the students instead of just having a student or a monitor handed out. So that is that's someone who's trying to stall out the day who doesn't necessarily have good content ready to go. Well, John, 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 you you're super. You're a nice person. And our administrators are always beautiful, lovely people. Stalling out the day or stalling out the observation is, is always how I look at things. John, uh, I know you used to have more feedback to give them, but can you share with us the time you and I were in Sacramento and the principal was about to throw us out because we're doing <laughs> we were doing observations right. and the principal kept saying to you, well, we probably just missed the... The instruction we probably just missed the learning int intention we probably just missed the and then you, you corrected them can you share a little bit of that thought before you give them more feedback i i, I want to make sure we capture this moment well we might add the new phrase academic time on task i think i had yeah. it right on the screen academic activities as opposed to just being uh, engaged and not off task or misbehaving these students were working on worksheets. They were in groups. They were doing, and we have a form, the EDI form, that says concept development, you know, guided practice skill. I mean, we have one column called other. Which yeah, they, 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 have it, they have it too, John. Okay, you've seen the form other. Well, we were up, what were we, Joel, about like class number seven, and we had six others, I think. Yeah. And we kept saying every. I said, "There's no teaching," and he get he really got mad at us. He said, "No, we're right here. The teachers are out there. We're not delivering any content." 
And by the time we went to the eighth or ninth class, he remember Joel, he completely reversed. He says, I get it. I see what you mean. The teacher's not delivering content. The kids are working in groups. They're doing an activity. Maybe they're doing silent reading. They're doing something, but it's not really delivering content. I think we only saw one class, if you remember, that was actually delivering content. Take a look at that. Think next time. This will be something new. We can think about uh, academic. Or no, let's think about delivering content. And I do have three other questions when you're ready, John, that we got from. Uh, you've seen the EDI circle before. This green is meant to be two-thirds. So two-thirds of the instructional time throughout the year should be delivering new content to students. The bulk of the time should be delivering new grade-level content. It's meant to be two-thirds. So just write two-thirds right here. That's about where that should be coming up, the two-thirds to that mark right there. You've got to do homework, periodic review, quizzes, tests, and other stuff. But uh, the bulk of the time should be delivering delivering new content. Joel, were you going to ask something else? Yes, sir. I, I have question three. So the first comment we heard from these lovely people is that mm -hmm. they, made a, they made a note of interruptions, phone calls, and time on task. Right. John, can you elaborate when you work with your school districts, uh, what what do you like to recommend, you know, to combat interruptions, phone calls, people visiting the classrooms? What are your thoughts on that, please? Well, I, I'm trying to remember the categorizations for off task. Off task is a behavior, teacher administrative, changing the PowerPoint, handing out the books. And then we need the uh, outside interruption. Okay, the outside yep. interruptions are the, the PA, the mowing the lawn, people coming in and out of the classrooms. Those are outside. The one you control as administrator is the outside, the PA, the people going in and out, mowing the lawn. I've had principals stop in the meeting and run out and stop mowing the lawn. <laughs> And a PA announcement, pick up the phone, said no more PA announcements except at like transitional times, unless it's an emergency or something. Very good, John. And then next thing uh, they mentioned is that they had the learning intentions, you know, learning objective, learning intentions on the wall, right. uh, on the board. And and my question to you is how important is it for the for the students, for the kids to state the learning objective? Uh, how what's the interaction supposed to look like for the inter, for that learning intention? Is it just for the administrator? Is it for the students? Is it for both? How does that work? Well, I think you know from EDI, teacher read, students read, pair share, pull a stick. It's mostly listening and speaking, maybe one academic word, but it's mostly listening and speaking. The, the children usually have a hard time pronouncing the new words. That's what the red pronounced with me is, is for this. But, that, but let's back up one step. Let's write this down. Standards-based lesson. I mean, we want the standard to be written, but we're doing a standards-based activity. So you might go in a classroom and these kids are doing something, you realize that's not really a standards-based activity for that grade level. Even if they don't have an objective written for the lesson, it's not standards-based. Now, a classic one is walking through a worksheet. We've gotten a worksheet off the internet or something, we're dealing, doing a worksheet. Joel, one time, says, what do I have on the end of my face? It's a nose. Oh, right, a nose. Great. What do we write to the teacher? We write a note, N-O-T-E. Great. And you know what the lesson was? Silent E. Nose. Note. And silent E was never mentioned the entire lesson. We just answered the question. I have a nose. I have a note. And we never taught the concept of silent E makes the vowel. You know what I mean? So we're doing a worksheet. And all we're doing is answering the questions and nothing conceptual or standards-based. So I think this is one thing you could look for is we're doing a standards-based activity. Now, an org standards-based activity, let's put that. And, then, and I mean a grade-level standards-based for your grade level. And then we should present the objective. And I think, you know, in the DataWorks lesson, we, the objective is actually on the top of every page if you're using a, you know, one of our adversary lessons. There, right, now, that's right. John, the example you're showing us here uh, it says, we will draw inferences from text. Why do we never say something like, we're going to learn about inferences. We're going <laughs> to talk about inferences. Can you share that with us, please? No, I think you know that you want to use the verb that the standards use. Those verbs are analyze, describe, distinguish, determine. Yeah. Do you follow? So don't say, we would never say learn about. Okay, learn about, and yeah. learn about is nebulous. It's, are we drawing? Are we, and I'll mm -hmm. just draw, not draw a picture, it's pull the information out. Okay, so the, usually these uh, standards are those Bloom's taxonomy words, 
we will determine, we will evaluate, we will compare and contrast, we will write, we will analyze. Okay, so let's, let's not go too far, but the idea is here, a standards-based lesson and the objective. And if you know this closure we do now, I think you've seen this, uh, you saw what the learning objective was. What did you learn today about drawing inferences from text? So this is the, the summary closure. What did you learn? Just tell me something you learned today. Summary, S-U-M-M-A-R-Y, the summary. Summarize what you learned. Now, this is the way the EDI lessons are set up now. And then we have a word bank. And when you tell your partner what you learned today, you're going to use some of these words. And the older students can write a sentence or two, almost like an exit slip, or just write something. And this allows them an opportunity to write these words also. These are what we call low-frequency words. <laughs> they're not sight words. They're all academic words. And then, uh, John, the last note I have from uh, their feedback today, before they ask you a bunch of questions, it was mentioned that some of the teachers maybe were uncomfortable or got kind of nervous. What are your thoughts on that? Go ahead. I think I mentioned last time, teacher are nervous because they're not being observed enough. I think I yeah. told you last time we did an everyday observation when we started. And uh, so you need to do it more and you should be out there. The, the minimum is like every teacher observed every week. Now, if you've got a small school and you've got a couple of ministers, you might even ramp that up. I'm doing this big project. I'm flying to Texas tomorrow, and the classroom observations is the foundation, actually coaching, classroom coaching. They're, they're tallying the number of times they've seen every teacher, and then their coaches are in a position that they can take over and teach if they need to see a strategy in action or if the teacher's not sure how to implement a whiteboard or something at that time, that they can take over and do it. Right. Once you have these, these student engagement poster items down, they're very easy to do, even if you don't you're not teaching, you can kind of walk in and just kind of do it. I want to show you one more thing. I did find... Well, don't, don't forget to ask them, uh, John, they may have questions for you before you transition to okay. your... Okay. So, uh, no questions? No, uh, no, no, no questions. No, no, good. All right. Uh, just to look up here, I found the form that we use when we collect student work. Uh, you see this little blue thing right here? This is the full-blown analysis of student work. Uh, what type of student is this? A high performing, a low performing, or medium performing? Because we want to look maybe at how the different students are doing. That's right here. What is the type of work? Is this homework, teacher guided, independent practice done by themselves, small group instruction, or a test or quiz? So we would categorize what type of work we've got. Now, this is the one I was talking about last time, where the work came from. Teacher created, that means they made up their own worksheet. Commercial now is like, used to be Frank Schaefer and these other people, and it's you know, eat, uh, teacher pay teacher, internet, just something they downloaded. Textbook would be the adopted textbook, district provided or school provided or created. And then to write then, and we had the teachers write down what they thought the objective was, and then when we calibrated, we did a comparison of how close they were to what we considered the objective to be. This is a lot of work to do it. It becomes a database or spreadsheet problem if you want to tally all this data, like what percentage is where all this stuff is coming from. But if the stuff is way off grade level, it's, you need to know, is it the school adopted materials that are off grade level or just random assignments they're pulling in on their own? And then the type of work gives kind of a feel of uh, where the teachers are, what is happening. If you never collect teacher-guided work, and maybe we're seeing too much homework or independent practice. All right, then this, this is the student's ability, and this is what the grade was given on the page. So you can correlate how well the students did it, and you can compare that to the standard or to their what the teachers consider the ability to be. You don't have to do all this, but it's something to think about. I don't want to do all of EDI again, but let's just go over a couple of ideas at the, the leadership level. Okay, so student success at the lesson level. We want a high, remember EDI is 80 to 100% success every day on grade level lessons. So one thing you can be looking at in the classroom is how well the students are doing on the daily, the daily work with the teacher. And sometimes if we're not checking for understanding enough, we're moving ahead while the kids are not with us and we don't really know because we're not physically checking. And so kids could be left behind. So we want to see the whiteboards come up or the checking for understandings with a very high success rate of the students. After feedback, reteach, whatever it takes, but we need to be this.
Okay, this is another thing for your reform model. Students learning more the first time they're taught. I think you better put that down or circle it. I just did a state-level webinar today in Texas. Almost every single person said the reform was tutoring. Tutoring, tutoring, tutoring. I was the only one who said the reform should be classroom instruction. All right. So great initial first teaching. You may have heard that of gift. I think that's we have a gift program with, with Australian lessons in it also. Well-designed, well-delivered lessons where students learn more the first time they're taught. Let's read number two. Teachers should be doing this. Ready to go. Modeling of higher order thinking by teachers. So if you have this page, we want great lessons, and I want to see more modeling so kids can learn more from the teacher, think a lot of how they solve the problem. And number three, here we go, school reform at the lesson level. At the lesson level. And that's what at the delivery and at the uh, design level. Okay. So let's just think, I'll let you think about a second or what idea or what would you be rethinking your school right now if our model for reform is optimizing initial classroom instruction. Here, I'll give you one more little talk, then you can come back. All students successfully taught grade level work every day. All students means all the subgroups, all the struggling, all the demographics, everybody's getting it. Successfully taught means the kids are successful as a result of instruction and not their background knowledge. Now, grade level work means we're not doing remediation. We're advancing the students' knowledge every year with new grade level content. And every day means what? We're successfully delivering content on a daily basis, day after day after day. All right. This is a pretty philosophical page, so I'll I'll let you uh, think about it or, or give me some thoughts about what you could do at your school to try to do some of this. Yeah. I think maybe that moderation of the work would help us look at that. Would it help? Yeah, it would help us look at that. But how do we introduce it? Whether that. Hmm. But it's a delivery of everything. That's right. Every yeah. Day. Ooh. And we already know. I think, you know, you walk into classroom, you already know who's modelling and, like, you know, like you said, you know, is it that whole we do, like, 10 minutes and then off you go, here's a worksheet? Mm. How much of the lesson is actually teaching? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And not, mm. I think, I mean? I think what they do, though, is break into their smaller groups. Yeah. So they might deliver the, the, the initial mm. lesson mm. and then they'll have a small group and work with those mm. on, on mm. whatever... Mm they're on yeah. while the others are working independently. Mm-hmm. That's what I see a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I saw yeah. them to be doing. And then the next day they'll be working with the next group. Mm. So they actually get that, I guess, you know, focus teaching only once yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. Really? Mm. They're getting one lesson, this is particularly in maths, one lesson well, a week. literacy rotations, that's what yeah, they do in literacy rotations. rotations. That's right. So they're really yeah. only getting that focus teacher time once a week, mm. once a week. Mm. But then, you know, we need to go back to that whole instruction. So what does the whole class instruction actually look like? You know, like, yeah, it's those small groups, it's that. What's actually happening in the But it's also catering for everyone and not that bottom 20% for everything. Mm. That bottom 20%, they get all the teacher time, they get everything slowed down for them, they get interventions, they get everything else. It's those... Jamie, Jamie's of the world who are bored, who are going to correct. switch off. Correct. A lot of time there, yeah. you know, in year two. Mm. And that's happening with a lot of kids. A lot it of kids is. here are switching off. It is. We have to right. stop it. L- yeah. Let me add a couple of thoughts right here. Can you see my slide? Yeah. This, yeah. Is yeah. Whole, th- this is whole class instruction. The teachers, mm-hmm. well, that's me, but I'm in front of the class. Every student's participating. They're showing whiteboards or whatever they're doing. This actually was, these were very small classes. But when you do pullouts, have you done pullouts? And have you ever done stations where the kids rotate? Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. Okay, now, if they have five stations and the teacher's in one little group, like down here, and the kids are at five stations, they're only getting instruction by the teacher 20% of the time. They're doing independent practice 80% of the time. 80% working by themselves. Mm-hmm. So I call stations independent practice. I mean, that's yeah, where you that work. Is, yeah. They're working by themselves and they're not receiving any instruction. And sometimes those stations at low grade levels are just time fillers. Do you know what I mean? 
they're not really academic. They're just an activity for the kids to do something as we rotate around there. It might even just be coloring or something, something really not too academic. Okay. Now, this one right here, if you look at this part right here, this is, you go to independent practice, and while the kids are starting to do the page, you pull out identified students, and you do the intervention right there while the other kids are doing independent practice. So you're kind of doing it in parallel. I think I call this in-class intervention. So at the end of an yeah. EDI lesson, you pull two or three students over to work with you, and then the other students are doing their independent practice. I think I may have told you last time. And then every five or six minutes, have the kids hold up an answer on a whiteboard just to keep them on task. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, that, that one there is what predominantly happens in most classes is yeah. you do the instruction and then the majority of them go off and the teacher works with that small group. But I like that white. I like the yeah. idea. Yeah. Of but I don't tasks. think no, but I don't think a lot of like if we go back to the rotation stuff, the rotations just start at the beginning of that whole fifty minutes is rotations really. There's none of that instruction. But I'm looking, if we take the rotation side out of it, yeah. for the predominant for the lessons across the yeah. day, that would be the teaching style, I believe, of the majority yeah. of our staff here. Yeah. Teach it. Kids go off and do independent practice yeah. and then they get small group. But yeah. those kids that are doing yeah. it by themselves. And 100% of the checking. time, it's the, I'm calling the lowest kids. Correct. Yeah. Well, there's no, okay, yeah. I want to call you, you and you, because you need to be pushed. We, we always, when we, when that happens, it's always the lows of the lows always. that come to you. Yeah. When I watch yeah. you teach, you don't do that. You teach whole class. Yeah, yeah pretty much all the time yeah. and then I'm walking around yeah you yeah, walk yeah. around and support as yeah, you're yeah. walking around you don't do yeah like, otherwise the rest you lose you know yeah, there's I no see. Pushing. you don't do that so there's not pushing enough yeah for the rest of them and it has to be it has to be right there and so then that feedback so people need to observe you but it's that it's that feedback like kids need feedback right then and there because I don't know what's happening between you and you if I'm working with Jenny and you could be doing completely wrong mm -hmm. and how am I supposed to know that yeah, without getting around. a book at the end of the day it's too late and it's already marked it's already right. cemented you know actually also does the same too yeah so it's she just, walks around and yeah. she delivers yeah, yeah. teaches yeah, yeah. they all do that work yeah. but she walks around yeah, yeah. and supports those yeah. that are but yeah. tries to push yeah. those that aren't so I find it harder in writing they're the only they're the only two that yeah. I see really do that no, that'll change next year I reckon yeah the writing's hard the writing I always do do like, like you know Damon Savannah Carter Jesse get over here and the rest it's you know that's when they get up and they're walking towards me asking for feedback but it becomes harder for, I find it harder for writing for maths. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully that, that, will that you be you're right. next year. You're right, yeah. Once we've got a decent yeah, strategy yeah, yeah. in place. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Sorry, John. <laughs> okay. I just remind me one more thing. I was looking at modeling right here. Most teachers, Thank they you. just clear this is the theme, this is the main idea, this is the lesson learned, but they don't model. They're thinking of how they pull the words out of the sentences and put it together to come up with it. So I would take a note someplace. You need to model higher thinking in, in reading literary analysis and all those things like how do you come up with it uh, main idea theme those are uh, character traits is another one that uh, topic sentence or main idea how you model that stuff it's it's just teachers we declare it but we don't we can't always explain how we came up with it so I mean if you've got the same thing there are many different types of dogs and there are many different sizes of dogs. Now, I don't know whether the main idea is the types of dogs or number of dogs. I'm going to look in the next sentences, the next three or four sentences. Are they talking about the types of dogs or the sizes of dogs? And you're analyzing that interaction between the sentences. All right, let's go on. All right, you've already had this in EDI, but let's just look at the brain research, the curve of forgetting. Uh, do you remember this from the EDI training? Yes. 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 Yep. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the leadership level. We need periodic review. And in the data works, when we put together the Australia, when we put the curriculum together, we did the second day, the seventh day, and then two or three weeks later. It's very complicated to do in a pacing guide because you've got all these overlapping periodic reviews. But I've told teachers you should pick maybe a day of the week every other Monday or Friday afternoon or just pick a set time and you're just going to review something. So I need you need to think at a leadership level. How can you implement a school-wide periodic review system? And the last thing is generally when we do periodic review, you need to work one first. 
if we're going to calculate volume, we just can't put that on the board. We need to show, remind the students how to do it. I did a study once where students were supposed to be doing this review every period, and the principal got upset. He says, only half the students are doing the review. And I said, only half of them remember how to do it. So figure out how you can implement some type of review. And the second is the teachers have to have a strategy where they refresh the mind of the students, either work a problem or have a work problem. So it's not a quiz. Periodic review is not a quiz. It's trying to get that extra repetitions, distributed repetitions, to get the stuff locked into long-term memory. So what do you have right now for a periodic review? Well, at the moment, we do a lot of work around daily review and mm. cycling things, um, it, you know, that we've previously taught. But I do like having more of a structure, you know, is it every Friday? Is it, you know, whatever it is, to ensure that it's happening consistently across the school because I don't think we do our daily reviews periodically well. You know, I don't think people are cycling things back mm -hmm. that they taught, say, in term two properly or even term one, you know, uh, how much of, you know, we're, we're so, you know, our curriculum is so overloaded. How many teachers are going back and teach place value that they taught back in term one? I'm just going from a maths perspective. You know, I don't think we do it well enough at all. Well, do some things they piece. build on each other, like addition, you do it, you know, for several years, but other things like geometric shapes, and there's some things you yeah, don't really right. do that yeah. much. And Correct. that you would, would need more yeah. review. Like doing spelling. spelling. But I also think in writing, they're always, oh, you know, capital letters. They're always bringing yeah. that back and it's become... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's only one small component. Oh, it's a very small component, but I think we'll get there. Yeah. I think next year will be a huge... Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But is it, you know, for that, like for, I've gone back to maths now, you know, is it every Friday? No, it's period. You, no, your, people, your lesson on Friday. Friday. Nina, people rely on gem. Gem, yeah. which that, I mean, that's nothing. I'd rather that than nothing. Really. Because it's, it's every component. That's every day, though, Gem. No, it's yeah, three days a week. Three days a week, yeah. The other two should be your own. And I don't think that's review. happening. Correct. I think people are just doing the Gem. Correct. So they do Gem three yeah, times yeah. a week and rely on that to do their review. Yeah. 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 Rather than reviewing yeah. your own course. So we need a math lesson once a week that's reviewing mm. everything mm. you've taught throughout mm. the year. You know, just thought. It's not every. It's not everything you've taught. No, you'd, you'd have to you'd have you'd to periodically have to periodic cycle and say, This that. is what I taught, and we'll review it. And you'd add a paid a lesson to that. Well, yeah, I don't. See, why not? So that's an expectation well, that we start to review less than a week. Otherwise, no, this doesn't happen. Correct. Like I said, yeah. we all just think Jen does it. Correct. That's exactly right. Sorry, John. We keep going on tangents. One uh, I just thought of something. A uh, periodic review for writing. You have standards for things like uh, sensory details, don't you? Sensory details or persuasive essay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so a periodic review could be write me three sensory details describing this picture or me or the classroom or something. Three sensory details, and then share with yeah. your partners up. So every Monday we're going to write some sensory details. Now here's another one: persuasive essay. So we're going to write three reasons or brainstorm three reasons for something. You know what I mean? Just the three reasons, the three pros or three cons. And we could do something like that also. Uh, so we don't need to write a full essay. We could practice more at the structure level, what our reasons would be, our counter argument yes. or something like that. And let me ask you, do you, ha you have writing tests? I know, don't you? Yes. Yeah. And isn't persuasive one of them? Yes. So, yes. Well, it's either pers persuasive or it's a narrative. Yeah. Uh, Ideally for that land, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Now, in the United States, when our tests come now, the, t the persuasive is not, I think we shouldn't wear uniforms. It's not, I think, anymore. It's you have to read articles and put together persuasive using evidence from articles. Wow, that's more powerful. So they'll show a letter to the editor. They'll show the school board minutes. They'll show a newspaper article, like whether we should wear uniforms to school. And they say, now you're going to write an article pro or con, but you have to base it on this, not just I think or I don't like. Most kids just say, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. It looks bad, but the new thing is to write it from text. So maybe you could just practice. You have some short paragraphs that said, let's come up with three reasons, pro or con, from these little paragraphs. We could practice at the small level. Dialogue could be another one. Let's practice a few sentences of dialogue. One of them is better vocabulary. I've forgotten what that lesson is. We didn't walk. We sauntered. We jogged. We skipped. We jumped. Do you know what I mean? Uh, usually, I think it's called descriptive words. Maybe that's what it is. 
Maybe we can have a word bank. And anyway, I'm just trying to think of other things we can do rather than just the yeah, generic, yeah. we're going to answer questions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So would you recommend then, you know, like now, like going back to math, you know, like should there be, you know, every week one of the lessons is designed to just be a review lesson? You know, oh, you is, could, is that the, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, the EDI lessons have periodic review built into them. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you look on the adversary lessons, have you, have you seen that? It's yes, periodic yeah, yeah, one, yeah. periodic review one, two, yeah. and three. Yeah, yeah. So if you look you at know, those, like, yeah. Would, would we get, like, if ideally, you know, like we're not so much, like a lot of teachers are using, you know, they, they dabble in and out of, of, of adversary, but, you know, like would you see power in a review lesson a week? Surely you would, wouldn't you? Well, you could combine. I think what you're saying is could you combine review yeah. from several things? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like from you know uh, where we're in term three at the moment. You know, I'd be re- reviewing from term one and a bit of term two, and that you know that that for, say it's a Friday. That structure would be something that I'd be working on, and it's pre- predominantly based on the teaching I've taught previously. Right. If that makes sense. Let me just show you one of our pacing calendars. This is a pacing guide from DataWorks. We have a day one is in orange. Okay, two days to teach a lesson. Two days to teach a lesson. <laughs> Okay, by the next week, now we taught another lesson. Now, day eight is the independent practice. Then we taught another lesson. And then now we've got periodic review from two other lessons, independent practice from two, a quiz, and another lesson. So if you look at this, you'll see the periodic review two and three. Those are from the lessons way back. Just It's a complicated pacing calendar. But if you look at it, yeah, you yeah. can see where we're integrating all the new stuff. And then here's like periodic review for two days in a row. So this is very complicated. I, I think it's easier if you just pick a time and say this is. Uh, That's right. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Because, yeah, that, that was where kind of, you know, when you mentioned about that, I think picking a time and having teachers solely reviewing right. the content because we don't have necessarily a program teachers follow. They're following. Obviously, they're using the curriculum to guide, like to obviously teach. So, you know, they work together in their PLC teams um, to create that. But, yeah, we don't have that periodic review. We have daily reviews, but based on the, um, a program um, that has been implemented, that's the only reason why we're getting those daily reviews happening. But, yeah, cycling things back is mm-hmm. going to be a lot more powerful. We uh, don't yeah, do the, that enough. Yeah. Well, the big takeaway here is, try to do some formal mm. institutionalization of periodic review somehow. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Now, J- John, uh, they, they did say something kind of, um, just something that, something of note. They did mention PLC teams. And then one of, one of our takeaways is that anytime we have these grade level meetings that are taking place, sometimes the, the standard that they choose may not be being accomplished. And the example is uh, you were looking at uh, the people in South Carolina and there was like a, a word search, a word search, right? And they were saying that this was hitting stand- like a third grade standard or something. And you're like, it is literally a word search. It's, it's nothing. Can you elaborate on whether or not uh, PLC, you know, how can PLCs be successful with the standards? Well, have you ever seen word searches in your classrooms? That's the thing that looks like. Yeah, not often. Not often. Yeah, but yes. Yeah. Okay. I had a a high school physics teacher turned in, or chemistry. It was chemistry. All these words, and you had to search and find the words. I calibrated as K, K, letter identification. That's the only skill. There's no connection to chemistry as you search for letters to find the word from a word list. So don't get confused by the content. No matter what it is, it's only letter. It's a K activity. So that was one thing we talked about, the time on task, academic time on task. So uh, we got a side, little side thing there. But, yeah, make sure we're not doing these kind of activities or not. Uh, go ahead, Joel. What were you saying? No, no, that, that was it. I was just making the point, like, hey, if PLC groups are picking learning objectives, maybe the leadership should just step right. in and step in the meeting and make sure that they're actually picking out uh, learning objectives and learning intentions and not word searches. Uh, I think we talked about tier one, two, and three last time. If you just look up here, this yeah. is whole class instruction. You're trying to get at least 80% of the students with you. Remember we said that lesson reform is whole class instruction. That should be 80%. Uh, 
Then we said we could pull those students out and do the in-class intervention while the other kids are doing the independent work. And that might be like 15%. We might, you know, we pick two or three children out of there. If we're pulling six or eight out, the, the whole class instruction is not good enough. And then the tier three is the out of class. The, the students that we just can't help in an ad hoc method, we need a, some type of a intervention or remediation program in the school. So if you look at this, it's, have you ever heard tier one, tier two, and tier three? Yeah. 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 I think tier two, and if you look it up, it's 80%, and it matches exactly what DataWorks has said, and Rosenthal and about other researchers teaching to 80, get at least 80%. Okay, that's tier one. That's This is EDI whole class instruction. This can be the in-class intervention or maybe lunchtime or something, and the out of class is a more formalized remediation or intervention for the struggling children. Now, we got to districts where these interventions were becoming 40 and 50 percent of the students. It was unbelievable. The whole school was being remedied. I said, no, no, we, you're backwards. We should be building this. And Joel, have you seen the upside down triangle? <laughs> They're building an intervention thing with no focus on the initial instruction. So, I, now, here's a couple more things. I hope I'm not repeating something you've seen before, but other reasons students are not successful. Independent practice doesn't match the learning objective. A lot of time we're teaching students to analyze similes or metaphors, and the homework is to go home and write 10 on your own. Or we're reading about something, then you're supposed to go home and write an essay, but we haven't really taught you how to do it. And have you ever noticed the textbook examples sometimes are out of sync with what we taught, or we didn't teach all the lesson and we're still doing problems we didn't teach? Yeah. All right, yep. So that's one thing to look at when they come back struggling is because this is one idea is we didn't teach all the variations or we didn't get through the lesson, but we gave all of the homework or independent practice. We should have only given part of it. This you may not see, but this is kind of we go from the objective and a few words and we go right to handing out the worksheet. You might see this sometimes we're going to the worksheet too soon and we haven't really taught con conceptual knowledge or model our own. This one you may see or not, if we're doing no checking for understanding, we'll never reteach because we're just, uh, we're moving forward. There's no kind of feedback. And I mentioned also yeah, the variations not taught. Uh, usually for teachers, uh, you need to look through the variations that are covered in the, uh, the lesson to make sure you covered the variations that are in the homework. If you're doing similes and metaphors, make sure you covered both of them before the kids are given the homework that covers all of it. Mm. So this is one more thing you might see in the classroom. I, I take surveys with teachers and they say, oh, yeah, all four of them happen in my class. All right. And then, John, we're at the eight minute mark. I'm so sorry. Oh, we're almost done. No, I don't have to say that. OK, let's go to this. Uh, you remember the brain research. Our working memory is very small and our we're doing to our long term memory. This is page 19, I think. OK, hey, just look up on the screen and we'll go to 19. Working memory is very small. It's three to seven items. We have a huge long-term memory. Mm -hmm. We're swapping in and out like a, a computer, like we've got RAM and a hard drive. All right, so this is the way the yeah. human brain works. So for students, we're not trying to overload. We're trying to get to long-term memory and everything. Now for teachers, what happens is, because the working memory is so small, I'm mean, talking about humans, we develop habits and we automate, like you drive to work every day, your car probably drives you to work, okay? And you don't have to put any conscious effort to it. Teachers develop a teaching strategy and they do it automatically without knowing what they're doing. We are trying to get the teachers to rewire their brain. You're going to pull the sticks. You're going to pair share. Well, we forgot the sentence frame. Oh, wait, we forgot to have the kids hold up the boards, right? So as Sylvia used to call this rewire your brain, if the teachers don't get enough repetition and they've not automated this right here, now we're talking about the teachers, they don't do it. Joel, early on, pair share was my most coached item. Teachers who never pair shared before, they just, you couldn't get them to do it because they'd start teaching and they'd just go off on autopilot yeah. and they weren't pair sharing. It took a lot of coaching to do that. So because of this, and this was one of my breakthroughs, Training is easy, implementation is difficult, and I think the teacher brains are working. Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a teacher come up, today we will do blah, 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 who knows what this means? You ever heard who knows in the classroom? 
Yes. All right. So I do EDI training. They're doing a perfect lesson. And in the middle, they just start saying, who knows this? Who knows what this word is? Who knows how to solve this? I said, stop. They just went to autopilot and didn't even know they were doing it. So we've got to get the teachers to automaticity. And we can't let them automate the incorrect practices either. Okay. So this is the research of transferring a professional development and actually into implementation. If they just hear the training from DataWorks, it's 5%. People will not go out and do it because they took a tra they're just at the awareness, right down awareness level. We know the word TAPL. We know the word student engagement norms. We can pass the written test, but we can't pass the driving test of actually doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my training usually includes, you know, we practice, we watch videos, I give examples. So I try to get DataWorks can get up here. But this last one, let's just read 90%. Let's read the blue part. Ready to go. In situation. In situation. Coach. And this is Joyce and Showers. You can look this up on the internet. It's a pretty famous study. A lot of schools know this. And school reform is so difficult because we don't get to the coaching level. And I don't mean observing the teachers. I mean real. This in situation means real time coaching. I had a teacher one time. I was forgetting to say who goes first, A or B, and the principal just started shouting in the class, "John, who goes first? Uh, a. Who goes next? Uh, B. Oh wait, I, you know." And I just and then about the third time, I said, "Okay, students, I want the A to explain to B." A explained to B, and the principal just started laughing. I said, you know, that really worked. I mean, to me, I'm doing a demo lesson. and he's just yelling out, make sure you, you know. And so you do need that. Uh, in situations, it's the only thing that works. Uh, we've done everything, sticky notes, emails, quarter debriefs, uh, after school meetings. The only one that really works is practice, actual practicing, not talking about afterward, but practicing while we're doing it. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, feedback is specific. Now, in EDI, we've already got the norms. We've got the lesson design. So why don't you write this down, criterion reference or criterion-based feedback. Uh, remember to pair share. Remember, we're going to track. It's right here. Track with me. Oh, don't forget to use the gestures. Here's a signal for, for gestures, or gestures, whatever they are. Okay, or pair share, whatever it is. So don't give what I call ad-lib coaching, which is just telling students teachers random things everything you give should be off one of these posters or one of the data work strategies they all know what it is that really that's the only coaching you're doing there's one more phrase on here nitpick you know what nitpick means Picking yeah. little tiny things okay just write this down it used to be someplace don't nitpick coaching must make the teacher a better teacher you don't need to get every time they forgot something or they drifted a little bit. You have to end up making them better as a result of your coaching. Maybe we should have just a little discussion or your thought about coaching. Well, it is, isn't it? And you go straight for that because you know that that's what you're looking for. If you see things, you know yeah. it's not right. Yeah. You get, yeah. We get distracted by that. Yeah. Mm. But people need to be open to it too. Like, for yeah. example, I went into Sonia's room and she yeah. was doing closed syllables. And she jumped around all over the shop. And because she asked me to look at it, I said, would you like me to model it and show you yeah, how yeah, I would yeah, do yeah. the lesson? Yeah. She's like, yes, please. So then I got up and modeled the lesson for her. But she was open to that, whereas yeah. other people, yes. if I was observing someone else and yes. I wanted to make a suggestion, yes. I thought if I called out, I think it would be a good idea if we did this, yeah. then that teacher would be like, oh, and you get off to Get off to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So you gotta, it's That's something I need to work on yeah. because Sonia was great. Sonia was like, oh, yeah, and she had a notebook mm -hmm. and she was taking yes, notes. Yeah, teachers are good with that. It's yeah. the ones that have been teaching a long time mm -hmm. that become defensive. Yes, like, and so I was sitting there doing my observation. And so I spoke to them about it after. How do you judge? How do you judge? Um, do you want to challenge the defensive? Older te like teachers that have been teaching a long time, they're defensive of how they teach. How do we change that? How, how do you make them open to coaching? You know, like, yeah, how, what's yeah. our first step here, you know, oh. to get into the room? You know, because the kid, you know, like, kids, you know, Sharon, our principal, obviously does a lot of observations. She walks around often. So we're used to having adults in our room. Mm. But it's that Sharon never steps in, though. She'll speak to the kids, never interrupts our teaching. Yeah. How, how do you break that wall down of if Sharon would have to happen to say or if anyone would have to say, how about, you know, you, you pull a pop stick now and right. without making them flustered? Does that make sense? 
You have to get the idea across that we're going to do coaching. You could even show them the slide. Is it just as, and explain that thing about the working memory and that automaticity where teachers, they don't really even know the practices. They're just on autopilot. Okay. Yep. So, Ooh, absolutely. Mm. Now, we can talk about focused walkthroughs. This is this what I was going to do next time. But a focused walkthrough, you pick one thing like uh, pair share. And you put an email, everybody, yeah. I'm going to come out in the classrooms today or in the next two days. We're all going to look for pair share. I want to see you do a pair share. I'm going to carry a whiteboard in that says pair share on it. I'm just looking for that one thing. I want to see if you can do it. So that's one way to get it. And everybody knows what you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you again, the basic coaching in a classroom is the red and orange poster. That's it. You're not redesigning yeah. a lesson on the fly. Now, occasionally you say, so, oh, can you come back to that student? She needs, you know, let her think about it a little bit longer or, or let's pick another one or do you can give a few other things but generally the the norms are what you're coaching on have you have we done the hand signals for the norms yeah, we have. Yes. Yes. you know the pair share uh, complete sentences yes. and all that so the teachers should be aware of that if you do that now the other one you can do is sometimes when i go in the classroom i will just and they know we're coming in for a kind of a searching session i will address the students directly at, and I said, oh, that's a great question. Can you explain to your partner that teach the teacher's going to call you in a minute? So everybody explain to their partner and be ready to answer. And then I said, oh, could we use our whiteboards for that? And the kids, yay, we want to use our whiteboards. So sometimes I give the coaching, I, I give the directions to the students. Uh, can you get out your whiteboards? That would be a good one for this one. So. And I think that would be confronting the teachers. So yeah. if you walked in and took over and said that. <laughs> I think, but, but I think we might. I, I think yeah, our first protocol is to actually show them what it is that we're doing. I think we need to explain. You know? Yeah. And the but purpose. you don't want to melt down. That's the main thing. You don't want to melt down with the teachers. And that's, and that's what we don't. Correct. I think that's we need exactly to do right. that first. Yeah, start definitely. And yeah. Talk but I think you need to set up that they're going to do it now. I've been sent to schools. Still, we did a lot of it uh, near here. Where the, the rule, I was to go into every class randomly, just walk to the classrooms and give coaching whatever I saw when I walked in. And everybody knew it. I did it, I don't know how many times, like two or three days or four or five days over a couple of months. And just that's what it was. This is the reform. We're having data workers coming over, and they're going to give coaching in every classroom, and they're just going to float through, and they're going to be here all day. And you don't even know when we're coming. We're just coming in. I'll accept that from an outside person, where it was when it's the inside, mm. it's a bit different. Mm. Yeah. Well, you could work out something, but this one, I mean, everybody knew it. It was part of the reform. We'd done training yeah. We'd, yeah, and they yeah. and said, okay, we're doing the next step. We've taught demo lessons mm -hmm. and now we're just going to do the, the demo lessons that we yeah. do coaching as we teach. Mm -hmm. The random walk arounds yeah. are coming around to just give cues later on. Right. So John's, John's yeah. main point is the most successful point. That is to say, here's the red poster. Here's our engagement norms. This is what I'm expecting to see. And teachers, I yeah. hope you yeah. don't mind if I don't see it, I'm going to go ahead and ask yourself <laughs> a question. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, one of our favorite, one of our favorite uh, vice principals never had an office and literally rotated into the classrooms. And that was literally part of their job was, uh, it, it, you know, here's a red poster. Here's the non-negotiables. Now, don't forget, though, we're, we're we've codified it right. The, these are the non-negotiables. I'm not nitpicking you, the teacher or our students. I'm saying I just want to see one of these engagement norms being used. It's, it's very mm -hmm. easy, and I, my car is parked next to your car, uh, so uh, we can still be friends. I just, I just need to see this. That's <laughs> <laughs> still be friends. And most of the time, you're just reminding them to do it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Mm. yeah. And they, they all know what it is. That's why I need to see it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just to be like a 10-minute little chat, because yeah. they, like they know it. They all know it, but they forget it. Because Correct. I go back to autopilot. Correct. The main point, though, is the fact that you're you announce that you're going to go and look for it. It's like the beginning. Yeah, it's, like, it's like the beginning of string theory. Just by the the mere mention of you saying you're going to look for <laughs> a a uh, certain uh, procedure, a certain checking for understanding, it just starts to happen because that's expected. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we'll do yeah. one of those. And then re and then once we've got a hands on and we're seeing it, I think that it needs to come back again because people know. Okay, this week I, I have to do pay share for this week. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, I don't have to worry about it. Well, that's what happened when I didn't go in yesterday because, but I had everything ready. I'm like, yeah, I had everything ready, ready every day. Every day. <laughs> that's right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's not a special. That's why. I knew that's that why I, I don't tell them. 
I don't tell them. I've not told anyone. I think in this case, I just turn up to to get that. You know, if we're going to come in and you know, like tell them, you know, okay, if you're not pair sharing, I think now would be a great time to pair share. They need to be preempted for that. And then once I think that wall is broken, then it can be I'm going to come in and I'm just going to say if I'm not seeing. Does that? Do you know what I mean? Because I think there will be people that. Did you tell the teachers you were coming in? I did. Yeah. No, I didn't. One well, they see one you one all the time. They don't see me. I just see rocked in and I went, I'm sitting here for this lesson. Yeah. I go, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but you're <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, different. Yeah, because I do it all the time. Whereas for me, it's, yeah, it's like, he's oh, right. He goes in a room and they all get they razzed up. Yeah, yeah. You just that's walk in the room now. But whereas yeah. they don't. Stop. Anyway, sorry, John, we keep going on yeah. tangents. <laughs> yeah, we are. No, I'm thinking for next time. Why don't you pull some student work and let's look at a couple of worksheets. Can we do that? All right. So the homework for next week is pulling homework. From and if you can email that to me, uh, scan and email it, or we can have it so that you can share screen your choice. But I wouldn't mind uh, having John look at it before that. Collect okay. each of the year levels if you can. Just a yeah. few different grade levels. Yeah. Is there a particular area like maths or English, or you don't care? Well, I know English is usually the focus, but it could be math also. We can look at a couple of other things. We look for academic vocabulary is one of them. And we sometimes we look for, do we have any uh, conceptual knowledge on the page as opposed to just questions? And do you want us to say whether that was independent work or um, teacher guided? Teacher guided or? Uh, no, just anything. It'd be nice if we, I, I mean, you can just walk in and grab a worksheet off the desk, you know, whether they're sitting in a pile on the side of the room. And you might get a couple of. We, we, we can scan some, like, we, we, don't, do, we, we don't necessarily, work yeah. We don't really do worksheets at all. Are you so. happy for us to scan but work? It, it'd be Not nice so. to have a, a few that the students had actually done, so we can kind of look okay. over how they're doing, you know, how they're doing on the worksheets. Sometimes you can see a systemic yeah. error, random error, something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, John, we do have yeah, to get, hey. John has to, uh, John yeah. does have to catch a flight tomorrow, so he has to get <laughs> In a little bit. He's, he's traveling. John, what's your last thoughts before we let him go? School reform at the lesson level. It's uh, at the instruction level. Yeah. Instructional leadership yeah. is running the instructional program, not just managing the facilities of the school.